and cheer. Oh, I'm sorry, and cries. Well, at times he cheers. Um, and it's the trickster tales. Hmm. Stories about tricks and pranks, especially when played by the lowly, small, and poor on the proud, big and rich, have delighted audience from the dawn of storytelling. In Europe, Reynard the Fox, or the German Rennick Fuchs, is the trickster par excellence, whose exploits were related by illiterate storytellers on market days or written down in elaborate form by some of the world's greatest authors. The trickster is a rebel against authority and the breaker of all taboos. He is what the best behave and the most circumspect person may secretly wish to be. He is, especially in the Western areas of North America, at the same time, imp and hero, the great culture bringer who can also make mischief beyond belief, turning quickly from clown to creator and back again. In Indian America, it is not the fox, but coyote who is the great trickster. His exploits are recounted from Alaska down to the Southern deserts, from the Atlantic all the way to the Pacific coast. Raven, mink, rabbit, blue jay, and other animals also take their turn playing the prankster and the troublemaker. Besides animals, there are human or semi-human tricksters. Old Man of the Blackfeet and Crow, Ictomy, the Sioux Spider-Man, Viho or Vihio of the Cheyenne, Manabuzho of the Central Woodlands and Great Lakes regions, and Whiskey Jack of the Cree and um, Saltaw. Even when a tribe has another such trickster of its own, Coyote often appears as his comrade and fellow mischief maker. In the plains and plateau areas where Coyote takes center stage, most tales bear witness to his cleverness, alternating with buffoonery, his lechery, his craft in cheating and destroying his enemy, and his voracious appetite and up unending need to keep poaching game. In the North Pacific Coast area, the emphasis is more on the Coyote's cleverness than his stupidity. Coyote, Coyote often poses as a woman and marries a man, presumably to be fed and taken care of. He also transforms himself into a fish so he can steal a valuable harpoon or fish hook. His gluttony and lust are well represented too. In all uh, regions, Coyote periodically gets his comeuppance even if, as in one story here, it takes several lifetimes. Shorn of the various surface features from different cultures, Coyote and his kin represent the sheerly spontaneous in life, the pure creative spark that is our birthright as human beings. They want me to read that part again. Um, Coyote and his kin represent the sheer spontaneity in life, the pure creative spark that is our birthright as human beings. Think about that. I, I just have to stop for a second. Pure creative spark that is our birthright. A lot of people just don't realize that. But anyway, um, he not only, not only represents um, some primordial creativity from our earlier days, but Coyote reminds us that such celebration of life goes on today. And he calls us to join him in the frenzy. In an ordered world of objects and labels, he represents the potency of nothingness, of chaos, of freedom, a nothingness that makes something of itself. There is great power in such a being, and it has always been duly recognized and honored by Indian people. Coyote also remembers of, an, of another salient element in Indian philosophy. There is laughter am amid tears and sadness tucked away in a raucous tale. The Sioux medicine man, Lame Deer said, Coyote, Ictomy, and all clowns are sacred. They are a necessary part of us. 
Uh, people who have so much to cry about, as, as Indians do, also need their laughter to survive. Until then, folks, be the frequency you want to receive. Get out there and spread some love and light. Until Thursday, I love you all. Have a wonderful night.